Welcome to my character design workshop with Beth Cam, Beverly Community Access Media. I am Brianna Costa, a Monster Art College student who is majoring in animation. I'll be sharing with you my knowledge of character designing with you. So for today, for part one, we'll be discovering the basics of character design. So for covering for the basics for character design, you want to create a character for a show or a novel. There are a lot of different forms of character design for animation. They need to be simple so you, as the animator, can draw them repetitively. And trust me, you'll be drawing this character all the time. Character design can be anything you can come up with with your imagination. There are literally no limits at all. And this video will cover the key design principles. Referencing, shape language, color and lighting, balancing, scale, repetition, rhythm, and tangents. We will talk more about these principles as we go on. As an artist, you should have references. Every artist, whether a professional or an amateur, will need to use references. We'll also need to research your character's background and backstory. You will want to do a lot of research to define certain aspects of your character. Examples, what type of clothing would they wear? What type of aesthetic would you want your character to be? As you can see here, I use my Pinterest to determine color palettes, the world of the character, and more. You can do this as well. If you do not have any social media like this, there are other ways you can do that. A good way to start for your character is to have a mood board of what you would like to see for this character. You can make two, one for their clothing and the other for their aesthetic. And again, definitely get some resources and some research for your character as you explore their cultures and what time period you want them to be. Of course, you would have to create a story for your character. What backstory would you like to give for your character? What type of journey will they face? Are they the hero of the story or the villain? You have the power to do that. For a good sense of your character, you can create keywords that can help you out to have an understanding of what you want for the character. For example, I use these three keywords, book lover, short, and glasses. That character is just a simple design that I came up with as I was just thinking of a nerd character who works in a library. The character's body type is a rectangle. As you can see from our next slide, we'll be talking more about shape language. Shapes on a character can be expressive of the character. As for a soft, friendly character, you can use more round, curved lines and shapes to give them a warm, friend friendly feeling. As for the sharp, jagged characters, they're more rough around the edges. All character designs start with shapes before really finalizing the characters with detail. Another method for character design is using silhouettes. By looking at these silhouettes, you can tell these characters belong together in the same show. They all have similar repeating shapes in their design. Making silhouettes give you a good base before adding details. This video, I believe, is a great example of character design with just shapes. Each character has their own unique style and color palette, but they all match each other's aesthetic. Since we are starting to learn about shape language, I want to give you an exercise to practice using shapes for character design. Get a piece of paper or a drawing tablet and draw some random shapes on it. When done, use your shapes as the foundation and draw characters over your shapes. If you're stuck, rotate your paper and try different angles. As an animator, the anatomy of any body is important as we want to understand how the muscles move in current motions. We will want to have our head line up to our shoulders. 
The shape can help inform the form of the body's anatomy. Be able to keep your form loose through actions. As you start to understand how the body works, you can now focus on exaggerating your character's features. You want your actions to have interesting motion. You want to define the features of the design so it can appear larger than life for the viewer. Think about Looney Tunes, of how cartoony they acted. A great example of shape language is from a show called Rise of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The character design of this show showcases the character's shapes of their personality. There are the twin turtles, which are Donnie and Leo. They have similar shapes with rectangle and sharp edges, even though they are different types of turtles. Then there is Raphael, who is the largest from their group. He is a snappy turtle, which is a more wider, square character than the others. Then finally, there is Mikey, the young one, who is more with circle shapes than anything. This animation video on YouTube has won a lot of awards because of their ability of exaggerating their characters' movements. I, I say I kept the Mercedes. How do you my think? weekend car? <laughs> Always make your design different and strong to interest your viewer. Just like the creation of The Simpsons, Matt Groening make their skin yellow for them to be more eye-catching than the other cartoons that are playing in their time. With all the information you have gathered today, I know it's a lot, but it's important for you to know about these as we keep moving forward. And remember to do your research and have reference for your characters, and it is important detail for you to grow. Here are some other resources that I would like for you to look over as we get to even deeper into care designing. You can find these videos on YouTube and the Sketch Daily website, which is free to use. I would recommend the book Fundamentals of Care Design. Overall, I would like for you guys to do some research on your own. As for homework, I want you to decide what care traits you're looking for for your character. I believe that is all, folks. See you in the next session. Hello everyone, welcome back with me on our second session of character design. For today's session, we'll go over colors, line work, and line weight with your character. Before we start, I'd like to overview what you have done for your homework. It doesn't have to be perfect, and if you have missed out on our last session, you can click the link below for our first section of character design. Something to think about for your character is their color. So today we'll go over the color wheel. You want your character to connect with their colors. For darker colors, they're more with bad intentions and it gives out more of a darker vibe. As for lighter color palettes, you are expressing purity and innocence, give them more of a friendly vibe. I want you to become familiar with your primary, secondary, and tertiary colors. It will be really helpful for you in the future as you get to create your own color palettes. You can even make monochromatic or complementary color palettes for your character. One technique to generate an effective color palette is choosing two complementary colors that can work together with a monochromatic color. I use complementary colors like purple and yellow for my shadows and lighting or navy blue and an orange yellow color for my shadows and lighting as you can see i have studied what i wanted for this character's color palette i wanted the skirt to have shades of pink and purple so i played with what colors would go great for this character on the right i played with what the character will be wearing given these characters 
are from a 2000 show, the outfit reflects that. Here is another example of multiple color schemes for a baby dragon. For an exercise, make your own color wheel, like the one shown. Gather any materials you may have and start making your own. Take your time with it as it could take a long time. As you can tell, cooler colors are in the left bottom with their blues and purples, as your warm colors are on the opposite side in the top right with yellow and orange. Take your time with it and have fun as doing so. Now let's talk about the importance of lighting. Lighting can tell a story for your character by just using light itself, depending on their emotion or atmosphere. The light source can be the sun, moon, lamp, reflection, or an open flame. For another exercise, I want you to study the light on your figure. Play around with the spotlight of your light source and the shadows that are making over the figure. Take your time with this. It gets better the more you practice. Let's learn about balancing and contrasting your character's poses. Find the effective balance and contrast in your character's design so that it can be believable with their actions. Straight line versus curved lines. Curved lines can help give weight and looseness to the form of your character. A straight lines can make your character look stiff and unrealistic. This is why you should play around with both straight and curved lines together. They create interesting line work for the viewer's eyes as they look at your character. Symmetry and asymmetry make designs feel more grounded, as you also want them to be believable for the viewer. It shows a lot in figure drawing in the examples showcased here. Then you have your line weight and texture. Adding texture or patterns to a character can enhance their personality and tell a story. With line weight, you can tell what looks heavy and light by how thin the line is. I would like for you to play around with line weight. Start drawing and try different types of pens. Get micron pens for traditional work. There are a great brand to use or even change the size of the brush from your drawing software. Take some time as you get to play around with cross-hatching and line art for your character and get to explore what brush works for you. For a good design, find harmony by simplifying and complicating the design. Simple areas can help the viewer's eye more quickly to look at the more complex areas. Positive space is occupied by your subject which is your character. Negative space is a blank space around the figure or between spaces. Negative space can be a powerful tool to enhance your character's appearance. Positive and negative space defines the character's shape. With this technique, you can make a great silhouette. For your homework, I want you guys to explore what you have learned today about color, lighting, and line art. Overall, this is all folks. See you guys in the next session. Hello everyone, welcome back with me with Care Design with Brianna, Lesson 3. If you missed out in any other sections, don't worry, there will be links below for you to catch up of what you have missed out. Today's lesson will be talking about character scale, repetition, and tangents. Before we get started, I would like to review what you have had from the other sessions. Were you able to create a color palette for your character's personality? If so, share it. Do you have a great understanding of what you want for your character? In this lesson, we'll go over the character's scale of height. To have the right height for your character, use their head shape as your measurement for your character's height. In this session, we'll go over the character's scale of height. To have the right height for your character, use their head shape as your measurement for your character's height. There are many ways to use the shape of your head for your body's height for your character. For your cute looking character, you can make them a lot shorter and even a bigger head with a small, short body. 
You can play around with the scale of your figure as long as they can balance and contrast well for their body. A great example of this is Winnie the Pooh. You can tell from his character sheet, they are using his head shape to contrast with his body height. The shape of his whole body is circles through the whole sheet. Another thing to remember is to have repetition in your design. It could be redrawing their body shape or even redrawing to understand what you want your character to be. The more you get to understand your character, it can affect their face or body type. Make a lot of sketches. They can be ugly or not. The point is to have the experience of using repetition. You can tell from this character there are many different takes of what the creator wanted the character to look like. A great way to do repetition is by drawing a lot. Figure drawing can help you a lot with that. Figure drawing is a great way to learn the repetition of the human body and understand how the body moves. There is a website that I like for you guys to use as you draw your figures. The website is really handy as you can customize how long you want it to be and what images you would like to have. The website will be in the description below, so take your time with it as we go further on. The website is called www.dailysketch.com. Furthermore, there is the rhythm of your character. This is what rhythm is all about, the outside of the figure's form. You want it to be interesting for the eye as you can create your character. Do you have interesting curves for your character? Does your eye go where you want it to go? Another important thing to look out for is tangents. Well, what are tangents? They're just lines connecting with other lines in the figure, which you do not want that to happen. Try to board them at all costs for your character's design. You want your character to be more realistic to the eye, making them more lifelike. Don't make your lines connect as it can make the design worse. For an example, you can tell that these two designs are different. In the left, Mostly everything is connected by their line work. As for the other side, it is more spaced out and looks more natural. Make sure you have something like this on the right side as it gives it space making it more realistic. I would want you to use a website again for drawing hands. Hands are important for the character because you can tell who they are by just looking at their hands. I know drawing hands is hard, but the more you practice, the better you will get at it. You can even showcase your hand drawings in your portfolio for colleges and jobs. For jobs in animation or illustration, they will love to see that you have experience in hand drawing and that you are willing to do it. For your homework, I want you to practice your figure drawing. It can be a helpful tool for drawing your character and for those who are interested in animation. Overall, that is all folks. See you in the next session. Hello everyone, welcome back to Care Design with Brianna, Lesson 4. If you missed the other sections, check out at the link below for other videos. In this session, we'll be talking about aging, emotions, and accessories. Let's get started. A character's age can be a significant in your story. For a great example, I am sharing some images of a show called Troll Hunters, Tales of Arcadia by DreamWorks. The design of these characters is well done for them being teenagers. The main character, Jim, the knight in shining armor, is the hero. There's Toby on the right, his best friend. Then there's the love interest, Claire, on the left, who also gets to join them in their journeys to save the world from evil. His name is Blinkley, and he's one of the many characters in the show who helps them out with his wisdom of the realm. You can tell he's more of a serious, wise troll from his poses and actions. Another character from the show has a human disguise as he is a goblin. His name is Walter Stickler. You can tell by just his name he's meant to be a villain. His figure is tall and serious and he looks like he knows what he's doing. 
Just by his color palette, you can tell he has evil intentions. Uh, there are things they need to be done. He's more of a side villain character before really facing the true villain. Faces need to be expressive when the characters go through emotions. There are a lot of different types of emotions that a character can express and it reflects their personality. Be expressive with your emotions for your character. Make your poses express the emotion. Showcase your character's range of emotions. And when they are sad or angry, really flush them out. Depends on their personalities, their emotions might even be muted. As you can tell about Nimona, her expression is everywhere as she has an energetic personality. Her face stretches and squishes depending on the emotions she's expressing. I think this is a great example for you guys to try out on your own for your exercise. I would love to see you guys play with your character's emotion. If you don't have a character yet, that is fine. You can draw yourself as long as you get to explore making expressions on your character. Stretch and squish their face to give them exaggerated motions. Draw a few different emotions around 10. If you want to draw more of them, go for it. You can use the emotions in this image or use resources like Pinterest or Instagram to help. Next, let's talk about accessories. Accessories can tell a lot about what the character does with their time. It can be a bag full of items for their journey ahead or a map that leads them to their destination. Your character's accessories can be simple. It could be something that your character uses daily. Clothing can even be part of their accessory, like a cloth or hood. Accessories can tell a lot about what the character does with their time. It could be a bag full of items for their journey ahead, or a map that leads them to their destination. Your character's accessories can be simple. It could be something that your character uses daily. Clothing can even be part of their accessory, like a cloth or hood. Wherever you give your character, it can tell a story by just telling the view who they are. For our last exercise for the session, I would like for you to find out what accessories are important for the character. Does it reflect their past? What does it mean to them? Have fun with it. Keep in mind with these three questions to yourself. What do you think your character will be using a lot? What would they have on them all the time? What would it mean to them? Therefore, for your homework, I just want you guys to support what you have learned so far in this lesson. Because in our last section, you will be making your own character sheet. So be ready. I believe that is all, folks. See you in the next session. Hello, everyone. Welcome back with Character Design with Brianna. This will be your fifth and final lesson for the series. If you missed the other sessions, check out the links below. For a recap of what we have learned throughout the sessions, we'll be gathering everything together to make a character sheet. What is a character sheet? It's mostly a sheet of what you want to know about the character. So then another artist can draw them and even animate them. The main thing I'll be looking for in the character sheet is the color palette, exaggerating poses, four to five expressions, character accessories, and shape languages. Also, don't forget as a character designer for animation, make sure you write notes about your character's looks. It can be important for others to know as they're drawing them a lot. Your character can be anything you want them to be. They can also be a teddy bear, human, or creature, or whatever you desire. As you can tell with these examples, from a short film I created with other artists. I create a turnaround for the characters so another artist can see them in other perspective. There's even a note about the two characters' height when they are side by side. This can be handy for others who are using both characters in a scene. It's also great to see how their faces stretch and squish with their emotions. There's Nico, who is more detailed than his partner, Sunny, if you couldn't tell. 
For your exercise, you can see there are the shapes of the characters and their color palette on the side. Make sure to have detailed notes on their appearance for other artists to follow. Now we can get right into it. Take notes that this will take a long time, but that is all right. It can be rough for the first time because you're still learning. This video is a great way to learn the basics of Photoshop and how each tool works. The link to the video will be in the link below. I don't use all the tools, but it is helpful to know about them for your resume. Trust me, Photoshop can be overwhelming, but just take it slow and easy. You can do it. It doesn't matter what skill level you're at, watch the video in your own pace as you create your character sheet. I'm sad to say this, but this is the end of character designing with Brianna. Feel free to subscribe to Bethcam and look out for future videos. I do hope you guys did learn something new throughout these sessions. Overall, that is all folks. Bye.